sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. The Ramble with Alex Bennett. Tonight at 1030 Eastern on GabNet. Who is Damian Chaplin? To begin with, he's host of the second oldest program on GabNet, doing The Exchange since 2014, four days a week for 25 minutes each night. Now, that has all changed. Welcome to the new Exchange. One day a week, but now for a full hour, or longer if he wishes. You see, there are no other programs on Monday night, his new slot, so he's all alone and can do whatever the hell he pleases. Of course, with no other GabNet offerings on that night, you might forget he's there. Well, don't, damn it. It's an immersive, interesting, and informative fair that's worth going out of your way to hear. Plus, he needs you to fill out his citizen panel. Damien Chaplin's new day and time are, now jot this down, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, that's Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The Exchange with Damien Chaplin, the loneliest man on GabNet. By the way, did I say Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time? GabNet, talk like you've never heard it before. Jack Bishop's Intersection, tonight at midnight Eastern on GabNet. Hi, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and I've had a long and interesting trip. It's called Life. And for years, people have demanded that I write a book about it. And while I've been a writer, my main talent has always been that of a broadcaster. Over a year ago, I decided not to write the book. But using my best skill, I decided to tell it. It's called Life in the Passing Lane. And I described it as an audiobiography. It's presented in 30-minute chapters, so it's easy to binge listen. And you can access it on the GabNet page by clicking on Life in the Passing Lane and going to a page with every single episode, plus some extras. If you want to access it on your mobile device, that's easy, too. It's on iTunes. It's Life in the Passing Lane, an autobiography by me. I'm Alex Bennett. GapNet's creator and founder, Alex Bennett, is always looking for ways to stay on the cutting edge. He first revolutionized commercial radio. He built a career on being one of the first to speak to the new generation of the 60s. Then he reinvented himself on Morning Drive Radio, where he was the first to use a live studio audience and guest comedians each morning. Another ratings winner. Next, Alex took off for Out of Space as he brought his unique perspective on politics and news to the satellites. Always a pioneer, his next stop was to create a unique format that no one else had ever done with citizen panels on the internet. What's next? Is there any place left to innovate? Are there any stones left unturned? Introducing GabNet Live on Roku. That's right, GabNet Live on Roku. No lies, because you can't lie on the internet. GabNet is now available on your TV. You can listen to GabNet's 24x7 network stream or browse your favorite GabNet shows from the archives just like on GabNet.net. But that's not all. You can also watch video of Alex's archived live stream TV programs as well as his televised Friday Night Ramble. It's all there for you, and all you have to do is turn on your Roku device, search the Roku store for GabNet Live, and add the channel to your lineup. Then sit back and enjoy. It's GabNet Live on Roku. Thanks, Alex. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this podcast. Now in our 
our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our uh, resident motion picture reviewer. Well, he's not resident because he doesn't live here. <laughs> And got my own place. Yeah, it's Michael Snyder, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. And uh, we thought we'd talk a little bit about, you know, the movie business or the lack thereof. Okay. Uh, how do you, well, we're not, do you have, the, you don't have theaters open in California, do you? We, we do not. I'll give you an example of what's going on here. Yeah. Supernova mm-hmm. opens in theaters somewhere. <laughs> and, and it's a pretty, Terrific film. It uh, uh, stars the uh, phenomenally talented uh, Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci as longtime companions mm-hmm. out on a road trip. And uh, there's an issue. Stanley's character has an issue, and it's a very uh, de rigueur, loving relationship that's going through some serious stress yeah. mm-hmm. because they're getting older. And again, there is a bit of a crisis, and it's wonderful. And yet, can't see it in a theater in California. Well, we can't fact, see it in a theater in New York either. There is no theater in New York. Well, what's going to happen is in mid-February, it'll be released to streaming services. And you'll be able to check this film out, which, again, is really a lovely, wonderful performance. I'm not going to say that Tucci does all the heavy lifting, but Supernova is worth your time. But, man, I, I'd love to be able to tell people, hey, check it out today, you know, but I can't. Either that or go to some theater uh, in the states where theaters are open and go catch COVID while you're at yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 I, I am almost upset by any motion picture that says only available in theaters because I don't think they're getting the safety factor, the public safety factor. And I think if you've got a good movie... And you put it on, well, for instance, you put it on a, on a service and stream it. You'll probably be, especially in the case of an independent film or whatever, you'll wind up making more money than you would have made if you'd put it in a movie theater. You know, I, I, you know you're probably right. I, I find it kind of, at first I was a little daunted by the idea, but um, the HBO Max uh, Warner Brothers deal seems to make the most sense of all. If you want to see a movie in a theater and a theater is open near you and the movie opens that day, great. Yeah. But we're talking about a health hazard in a lot of ways. Uh, this thing is virulent. The, you know, COVID is changing, uh, mutating. Uh, mm-hmm. The vaccinations and inoculations are, are okay against these new strains from what I understand. But it's still getting out there, and it's far more. Um, I, I get. I use the word virulent. Yeah. I think. It's easier well, if, to catch if you these if new strains. yeah, if you're going to catch it, you're going to catch it in a movie theater. I don't care if you're if you're six feet apart, okay? Because you're in an enclosed, uh, almost vacuum sealed room, okay? Uh, and uh, unless these places have proper ventilation, meaning they've got HEPA filters that can filter out COVID and so on. Uh, you're, you're really taking your life in your hands by going to a movie theater. So what is this as a whole done to the movie business? Now, like, for instance, uh, we use as our, uh, as our touchstone, okay, uh, the J- next James Bond release, which was last year's James Bond release, right? Uh, first of all, it was supposed to be out, what, last March? April, I think. April, and then in March we came down with COVID, so they moved it to... November. No, November. And November, they said, we're moving it to... April. April of next year. And there's a rumor now that they're not going to make it at that point. So this film, won, by the time it get, actually gets into a theater, because they're waiting to release it in theaters, uh, because they don't have any kind of outlet. I think it's Columbia, Sony. They don't have an outlet uh, like like 
HBO Max, which is owned, which owns Warner, which is owned by Warner Brothers and whatever. I mean, it makes sense for Warner Brothers to show their films on HBO Max because it'll drive more people to subscribing to HBO Max, which will then make up for the cost of the movie. Right. Right. Plus, Wonder Woman wasn't that great a film anyway. So, no. you know, I mean, I sat there and went, oh, big movie, Wonder Woman. The second one looked, the first one was so good. And then we watched it and went, yeah, it should be on HBO. <laughs> you know? You know, I, I, I thought I told you, I think I told you last time we spoke uh, that um, a friend of mine said the Wonder Woman movie was so bad she wanted to leave her house. <laughs> <laughs> That's she very was, funny. She was watching it at home. So and bad. Look, 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 it, it's, you know, she wanted to just walk out. Uh, but uh, honestly, for me, it's a bit of a conundrum in the case of Warner's HBO Max. And I don't want to whine. I'm not inclined to do that. But the Warner's media player that they developed right before wonder woman 1984 and released to those of us who are going to review it and hold our reviews for the friday of release mm -hmm. only work on certain formats they do not work on the format i use which for better or worse is a standard pc i am not going to watch it it works on android i am not going to watch a blockbuster movie on my phone it's daunting enough well, right. to watch on my laptop, but I'm cool with it. I've adjusted to the laptop. Well, I, I, because I'm technically proficient. Every year we used to get the, uh, 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 because I'm technically proficient, I can take that picture and put it on my big screen, okay? Um, uh, because I can't stand watching it on the computer. I'm not going to watch, watch a whole. I'm not going to watch a whole movie on a computer. You can move an Android on your phone to the big screen. Is what you can do is that with like uh, Roku and with um, uh, Apple TV. Uh, units you can uh, you can uh, you can take your picture from your iPhone and transmit it to your big screen and then watch it there You're using your iPhone as the medium to capture it but then the iPhone is then sending it to the Roku or the Apple TV right. so uh, well, let me just let me yeah. I gotta interject if I had a Roku system I could watch it mm -hmm. if I had a Mac system I could watch. In other words, I don't have a Roku setup here. And the other thing uh, you mentioned, um, which was Apple TV, they have mm -hmm. an Apple TV component. They just said, oh, you know, PCs, sorry, out of luck. So I waited happily. It, it was the holiday season. <laughs> this was the worst holiday ever, everybody. Yeah. But it was the holiday season. So I waited. I was <clears throat> able to see it. And eventually we were able mm -hmm. to talk about but I had to wait till the day of release, and you know, that's not what we're supposed to be able to do. I should right. be on Friday. I should be able to talk about the should new. Should be, yeah. You should be able to do it when, it, yeah. I know the Malik thing. The little things opens on Friday. I contacted my uh, Warner's person, and she said, "Sorry, we're still using the Warner's media player." And I was like, "Sorry, no review for a week." But I mean, clearly, Denzel Washington, Remy Malik, and uh, you know, uh, the uh, the the crime drama uh, it, it all sounds exciting jared leto sorry it's surprising to me that these movie companies who are now relying on people reviewing at home okay are and they know they have to release it through their well, i say warner player or whatever don't have an accommodation on the warner player that will allow you to send it to your big screen tv right well you know. That they're so they're so back in the last century that they can't come up with that kind of a, a piece of work on there, you know. Well, I it, it, the, the problem is if I can't play it on this device that I'm using right now to talk to you without any problem, then I can't bump it up to my monitor which I have behind here, and I do have connectors. Look, here's a lesson for them: Amazon and Netflix have tremendous. Mm -hmm and tremendous free release players for reviewers. I have no problem watching them. There's never buffering, by the way, on any Amazon or um, or Netflix movie that they give me. For instance, uh, there's a movie opening tomorrow called The Dig. Uh, I can't talk about it yet, but Netflix gave me access to it two weeks ago. Ray Fiennes, Carrie Mulligan. This is no small potatoes. It would have been in the art houses 
and will be in art houses in places where people don't care about catching the virus. Right. Um, you know, it's available on Netflix so this coming Friday, which also brings up the fact that all of us over the past year have enjoyed binging uh, the, the golden age of streaming TV from all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, it, my French has improved exponentially since I started watching Lupin and the latest season of <laughs> All My Age. <laughs> Man, I could order at any restaurant here in L.A. that yeah. serves the French food. No sweat. Yeah. But um, they're, they're great. They're great. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Uh, when I, with uh, sag after, when we get our yearly screeners, you know, the way we got them is that we would go online and they would come across on a uh, on a player. But that player was made available as a Roku app and as a TV or as an Apple TV app. Okay, so we could then just watch it on our TV set. The other way they released them, in case we the, you didn't have the Apple TV, is they would give you a, a, a authorization to go and download it from iTunes or from uh, yeah, I think from iTunes. And so then you would get it from iTunes. You'd give your you know, your confirmation number or whatever, and then you'd have the picture as a file. And then you just play the file on your screen. Um, but you know, it, it's that they're they're so they sound backward. You know, they sound like they can't get it together. And and it's especially important to get it together for people like you, the reviewer. You know, they get it together for us every year when we got to vote on them to make it accessible. Uh, they right. even send us hard copies of the films. All right. But, you know, it's it's really it's just. Yeah, but, back, but, but back. again, what's happening to the movie business? In other words, are they really suffering or is is playing them off uh, um, pay-per-view or whatever uh, doing the job for them? Some films. I, wonder, I mean, I wonder about the. Hmm? I was going to say, I wonder about the financial circumstances. I wonder how remunerative any of this is. I have heard that um, some of the, I, for instance, I heard that Soul was incredibly successful for Disney Plus. And by the way, I I love it. it it's a lovely. Yeah, film. yeah. I mean, but they 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 gain subscribers as a result of it. Considerable. And yeah. They also monitored the amount of times it was viewed. Holy cow! It was viewed. So many times, I, I, you know, I don't have the exact number, but when I looked at the number, I went, "This is a massive well, success yeah. for them." They have a, one other thing going for them, though, and I don't know if they how they figure out whether the person got it for Soul or whether they got it for The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, it turns out, in streaming services as a binge watch, in other words, a series, is the most successful series. On well, they're 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 this, able to on the internet. Numbers. Number two is the crown. Okay, right, right, of course. But they're able to find out the numbers of what you're watching. For instance, they know that I'm. Oh sitting, yeah. They know that I that I'm halfway through series four of mm -hmm. Call Agent. And why am I doing this interview when I could be watching the Sigourney Weaver episode? Come on, buddy. No, but honestly, there's so many good things out there that are serialized miniseries and ongoings. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow on Disney Plus, I, I'm not sure when you're watching this, America, but tomorrow on Disney Plus, episode four of WandaVision, when all the shoes yeah. uh, start to drop. So if you've been watching that yeah. over the past couple of I've weeks. Been, I've been watching WandaVision and trying to figure out what it's about. <laughs> you're you're going to find out tomorrow. I, I, what, I, what I'm getting as I got to episode three is that there is a shoe to drop and that it yeah. does become a superhero thing. And well, yeah. Uh, yeah, but in the beginning, it's just a '50s sitcom. Yeah, well, and then, an then in the second piece. episode, it becomes it. It slowly migrates to a a, set, uh, a, a '60s sitcom because it's in it's beginning in color. And finally, right. the last episode was all in color, right. and then finally it goes to widescreen and a bunch of things like that. You know, so there it, is something it, going it, on there that that you know right. that I'm looking forward to. It's daring, and it, it it's kind of a sucker punch at the beginning because you're like, why are they doing this sort of substandard sitcom stuff with all well, the obvious? You, you, it, and then little yeah. little things start happening. Someone referred to it as, uh, well, Pleasantville MCU. You know, uh, yeah. someone also said 
um, you know, Mulholland superheroes. You know, it's like a David Lynch thing in some ways because there's something really off about it. You know, it, a racer head off about it. As it well, I mean, it, let me say to people that it, 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 when I did it, this happened to me too. When you t watch WandaVision and you watch the first episode, you might be tempted not to go back for the second episode because it, if something is going to happen, it's not happening in that first episode. It's just setting the whole thing up. Get through that episode. Go to episode two. That'll suck you in a little more. And then episode three, I mean, oh, what? Uh, there's an enemy out there, and it's one we all have heard of? There's a lot going on. Yeah. Not, I, I don't want to spoil anything because it's that sort of thing, but be patient about it. And I will only say this. If you are a fan of the Marvel movies and have been watching, have patience. Watch it. If you go to it and go, oh, this is not like the movies, hang on. And I will say one other thing for your benefit, mm -hmm. the Maximov, the the lead woman in this thing, who has kind of telekinetic powers in the Avengers movies, was raised in an Eastern European country yeah. and learned how to speak English somehow. And maybe she was watching a lot of sitcoms as a kid. You never know. They were they were well, everywhere. Uh, you know, I don't know about who Maximov is. I mean, I, I just didn't get that much into the Marvel universe once again. That was that's just her, her last name. Yeah, but I can't even remember. You know, there were so many people in that last Avengers movie, so many right. superheroes that I lost I went, where did this one come from? You know? I mean, they were th comics. they were throw yeah. Uh, but if you don't read, it didn't read the comic books. It's a little harder to parse. But anyway, the point I'm making is is that it's these things which are making these services invaluable. I mean, Disney Plus I think is worth the six ninety five a month. They raised it a really? dollar. Yeah, and plus, you know, if you've got four other people, three other people beside yourself that you want to have watch uh, Disney Plus, you can simply allow them to go on because you're allowed to have four people watching at the same time and they can be anywhere in the United States. So you can actually have people, you know, hop on to your, to your, uh, uh, subscription. Secondly, I think the second most valuable now, uh, is HBO max, uh, because the day they opened their doors, they literally regurgitated everything that Warner's own practically, you know, and there are, hundreds upon hundreds of old movies or hundreds upon hundreds of old Warner Brothers cartoons. There are series. It's really good. And it's the same price that HBO used to charge just for HBO. And, and for superhero fans, they pulled in all of DC Universe's live action. Yes, and that's right. Plus... By the way, they, they literally gutted a thing called DC Universe, right. uh, it's uh, now, which it's, is now it's just now a, a bunch of comic books online. Right, it's a digital comic book library. But also, they, um, I think you have access now on uh, HBO Max to uh, Batman the Animated Series, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful noirish thing that, that recalls uh, the Art Deco era mm -hmm. of Fleischer Superman cartoons. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff there. And I, I am a firm believer, Algorithm is trying to point me wherever they're going, in Netflix as well. Netflix, HBO Max, Disney+. Plus. Amazon has its charms, but mostly I think for people to just go on Prime and, and rent films. But mm -hmm. these other services have so many good things. Uh, Apple Plus is just getting started, so I, I, I don't think... I don't think good. Apple Plus is going to survive. It's got some good stuff on it, but right. it's not worth the money. And I, I, subscri you, I subscribe to it because for a year I got it for free because I bought an Apple TV or whatever I, whatever reason they gave me. I think I, I had an iPhone. I can't remember, but I got a year free, and now I'm starting to pay month to month, and I'm sitting here wondering whether I should. What do you think of um, this whole Paramount Plus, which is starting in February? Well, oh, another one starting up? Paramount Plus will be CBS All Access, which is going to be folded into Paramount Plus, and the entire Paramount Film Library, mm -hmm. original material, new CBS stuff, uh, other things from Viacom. Um, so yeah, as far as CBS All Access, Viacom Dios, you know, it's it's going. It's going to be absorbed by Paramount Plus. So you're going to have another um, competitor in that market. But how much are they going to charge? I, I, you got me. I, you know, I just, it, 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 my question is, what is the sweet spot for price? And I, I, I couldn't you, tell you. You know, you know, I mean, we've got we we've got. 
Do you know how much I'm up to on, on Netflix now? I'm paying $18 a month because I, 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 I take the high def, the 4K version. Okay. Because of your home system. Yeah, which a couple of bucks more. But I'm every year they've gone up a dollar, two dollars, and now they're starting. I think the price. In fact, they've they've leveled in subscriptions now because people are saying, "Hey, I don't know if I want to pay that much money. What? Pay more for Netflix than I pay for HBO Max, which has all this stuff, right. you know? So what's right, the right. sweet spot price? I pay for Hulu eleven dollars, twelve dollars a month, but I do it because I get it without commercials. Right. All right, which is very valuable to me. To, to your time. Yeah. Let me just say right now that the 18 bucks a month, mm -hmm. consider uh, if you and your sweetheart go to a movie mm -hmm. back in the day, et cetera, et cetera. So let me also point out that last Friday, an amazing film dropped on Netflix. I don't want to sound like a Netflix cheerleader, but the White Tiger is an absolute must-see. Oh, really? Do you remember um, Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah. The White Tiger makes Slumdog Millionaire look like Ernest Goes to Mumbai. I mean, I'm telling you, it is dark and powerful with a great cast. The only familiar actor in it is uh, Priyanka Chopra, uh, who plays the Americanized wife of a... Um, uh, wealthy corrupt businessman oh, i thought it was of a, a rock singer who has a band with his brother i, I tried to keep the jonas yeah. <laughs> yeah she's billed as priyanka chopra jonas okay okay all right but, but there's no you know it's terrific it's on netflix i mean i can also point on hulu to uh in and of itself which is a, a an amazing experience mm -hmm. If you've had a chance to watch, but by it the way, by the way, you go to you go to Hulu, you go to Hulu, and they have all the FX shows, all right. the FX shows, uh, including you know. uh, including You're the Worst, which is one of the great sitcoms of the yes, past. Yes, absolutely, and including, of course, uh, my favorite, What We Do in the Dark or Shadows or whatever that. Show. Exactly, Archer. Well, I've never liked Archer. I, it's in my talk about sweet spot. That's my sweet spot. Yeah. You know, uh, detectives, cartoons, whatever. Anyway, but let me just say that each of them seems to offer something uh, within a few weeks uh, of each month yeah. where you're like, well, I guess well, this is the, worth it. Here, here are the ones I'm thinking maybe getting rid of. I have, I'm have i paying for Peacock, and I'm paying for it without commercials. And I hardly ever watch Peacock, so I'm thinking of dropping it. It's just, for some reason, there's nothing there for me. Uh, I mean, there's stuff there, and... But I, I don't need to pay nine ninety five a month for their you know commercial free service, uh, so I might get rid of them, uh, and I'm thinking of getting rid of Apple TV because outside of uh, we're watching The Servant, and they're coming back with that for all mankind series, so I'd like to see that. But there are other places I can get this stuff. Okay, we're just saying this off the record, so I don't necessarily need to subscribe to them to get it. You know? No. But but again, that that is where the film and um, television business is, has migrated, as we discussed over the mm -hmm. past year. So, I would love to sit in a movie theater again. I haven't had my first vaccination, you know. I, uh, I had mine. Of, yeah, the, I had mine about a week ago. So. Oh, yeah. aren't we special? But yeah. I mean, hey, come on! Yeah. I want one. Everybody wants one, you know. But once that once that happens, maybe things will change. But in the meantime, it's, you know, it's... Well, have you hit the magic number of 65? It's my laptop that I'm worried about, not my uh. physical ability. <laughs> you know, is my laptop going to help me out during this, this time of sorrow? No, I'm and saying, but are you, are you eligible for the, uh, for the um, vaccination? Sooner or later, yeah. This is the way, I mean, this is the time at which people have been... But when people have been lying about their age for years, this is the time it all changes. Well, I am 65. Yeah, well, here's what I, here's what I know, honestly. As soon as I can get it, I'm going to get it. Can you and get it? I'm asking you, can you get it? I should be able to. Are you eligible it. for it? I, I think yeah, so. yeah, 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 you, know, you can say I have a pre-existing hey, pre condition. Look, I don't want to die. I'm bald. Look at me. Look at me. I don't want to die. I'm an old man, and I know it. I have a pre-existing condition. I love living. So anyway, we I, we got about fifty seconds left here. Uh, state of the movie business, but it's never going to be the same, is it? 
Uh, well, no, we now have options to stay at home. We have options to see things mm -hmm. in serial form that have the same kind yeah. of weight, uh, drama, comic energy as uh, mm -hmm. the best feature films. It's going to be different for this yeah. time, uh, from this point on, for sure. Well, listen, let's keep doing this every couple of weeks uh, because of, I, I, I am serious about it because I like this format that we're doing here and talking about the business and being conversational about it. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll uh, probably do your movie reviews and, uh, soon and put them up. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, 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 this is maybe the best way to get the whole thing across. I don't know. Anyway, well, maybe yeah. we'll try to do a, maybe we'll do a culture blast in another week or yeah. two. But uh, we're, we're stockpiling good movies. If you haven't seen um, uh, in and of itself and you have access to Hulu, for instance, I'd recommend you check that out. And okay. the White Tiger as well. I don't want to tell you anything about in and of itself, except that it's a one man show uh, by a storyteller, mentalist and, you know, up close mm -hmm. magician. But it's way more than that. And at the very end of it, I was kind of choked up. Ladies so and gentlemen, uh, there's Michael Snyder. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, and there goes Michael Snyder. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we'll do that again in a couple of weeks because it's kind of interesting to just talk about moving pictures and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, what are we going to do? 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 Uh, I guess we're going to go talk to our people here in a second. Uh, I have nothing really to talk about. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, do this. Let me see here. i got to do something here. i got to clear something out. All right. I'm, uh, I'm just tired of all. I, 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 when I start off the show tonight, I, I press the wrong button here or the wrong button there and it, so if you just saw the beginning of the show and then it didn't have any sound and then I stopped it and then it started again, then you're, you're fine. It's fine. I just, I'm getting too old for this, I think. I think, I think, I think. But I keep doing it. I saw, I saw a documentary. They ran a documentary on HBO Max on Muhammad Ali on his life. And it's excellent. If you haven't seen it, it's called What's My Name, Muhammad Ali. Uh, and uh, it is uh, really, it was done by Anton Fugua, and it really is an incredible documentary. But I watched this guy, and even after he no longer had it, he kept fighting. Even though he started losing, he kept fighting. You know, but he, he didn't want to really, he didn't know when to stop, really. And uh, I just have that great fear about myself, that I should know when to stop. And I, I don't want anybody out there saying, boy, he's really not like he used to be. He's not, he's not very good anymore, right? You know, um, so I, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go to the, uh, uh, the what do you call it? The what do you call it? The thingy, yeah, the thingy we do, yeah. Uh, let me see here, how do we do this now? I keep forgetting, oh yeah. I go down here and I go admit all I'm just out of it today. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, you see, that's why I should be quitting. Uh, and uh, we go to our panel, and there we go. See, we got, uh, we got uh, a couple of them there. We got uh, Jeff, and we got uh, um, uh, Alan, and we've got Brian. And we've got, come on, Charlie Wallace. Come on, Charlie. Come on. Yeah, he said he's having problems logging in. Really? Yeah, because yeah, computer crash. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. We'll see. Well, we'll see. It would be a, a night without Charlie would not be a show. We just have to quit it right now. You know. No Sergeant at Arms. No Doctor Doom. No, no Doctor Doom. Wow, and the show is bad. Let me see. So whatever happened to the Sergeant of Arms? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh. He didn't say. He just said, "I," you know. He said, uh, sorry, I haven't been there. You know. Maybe he's tired of your comedy? Could be. Could be tired. Oh, there we go. There's Charlie. Charlie's going. There's hey, Charlie. Here we go. Problems tonight, right, Charlie? Yeah, my computer crashed during Michael Snyder, and so I hope I can make it through. You know, my, my computer, I had I all kinds of problems tonight, because mainly because... I don't know. I took. I guess I took my. I took my nice pill again yes. last night, and I'm a little. Oh, you can hear. Who was he from it? Wait a minute. 
Jeff, turn mute yourself if you're going to talk like that. Because just go to the last uh, minute. No, uh, uh, Jeff, are you there? Can you hear us? <coughs> Can you hear us, Jeff? Oh, everybody's having problems tonight. <laughs> Like me. Well, maybe it's not just me. Oh, okay. Maybe it's not. He just hung up. Gone now. <laughs> that's the way to solve the problem. Yeah, that's the way to solve the problem. Always remember, folks, there's an axiom. When things go wrong, what do we do? Reboot. Turn it off. Reboot. I always tell Marjorie that. She goes, my computer isn't working. Now, can you come fix it for me? And I go over and I go, what do I tell you to do when something goes wrong? She says, Reboot? I said, yes, reboot. <laughs> there, there was a South Park a, a while back, a long, long time ago, and something, everything was crashing around everybody, mm -hmm. and Stan or one of them knew knew how to fix it. And they, they had to go to the government, and they were trying to get in, and they finally snuck in there, and there was like a big modem. And they, he said, turn it off, and then turn it back on. <laughs> 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 so they do that and everything else. Everything it's perfect. true. Just if, if anything ever goes wrong, reboot. Hello, Jeff. Can you hear us now? Yes, but we can't hear you. <laughs> good, 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 good. Perfect. He's got his mic. No, no, just say, no, good. That's fine. How's this? That's good. <laughs> there we go. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, wait, let me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> nah, no. Oh, we got to do your temperature for like 15 minutes. We forgot to do that. <laughs> We do. Oh, that's right. Oh, my temperature or his temperature? Yours. Your temperature. Alex, yeah, we got to do yeah, 10 you... minutes of your temperature. Nah. You know what? I, <laughs> yeah. I never want to take my temperature again when I've got my hat on doing the show. Mm -hmm. Because when I do that, the thing with the with the gun, it's always high. Yeah. It always sometimes is like 99 or whatever. That's why I think that's the worst thing they can do to check you. I mean, they do it that way because it's the fastest. They're not going to ask everybody who walks <laughs> in the door to stick a thermometer in their mouth. Mm -hmm. All right. And and then have to sterilize it every time. So they do this thing. But if I'm outside and it's really cold outside and now I come in and they take my temperature, it's going to be low. You don't question about mm -hmm. it. Even if I'm running a fever, it'll be low because it's my surface temperature. Whereas the, you know, the thermometers, the, well, who, here we go again with the whole sickness and the whole oh, yeah. well Going back to your, your discussion about your chops and stuff, I, I think you're still as good as you were before. When you see the Larry King stuff, you're just bouncing around, you know, going back and forth and stuff. But with this format, you, you still see the same, see the same. Yeah, well, I, I you know, I, uh, whatever. You know what, you know what happened when I got, I got a, a note yesterday from my friend, uh, Walter Sabo. Mm. Hey, let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. Then I, I put it under here. Put it under nice letters. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, yeah, Walter Sabo. Listen, listen to this. Uh, it says uh, this morning at uh, let's see, eight fifty-four. I guess maybe that's eight fifty-four his time, or eight fifty-four our time. Howard Stern said, "What a great host you are, and how much he likes you." Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> 20 years ago. You know, he had to wait till now to say it. Couldn't he have said it as they were booting me out the door at That's Sirius a, yeah. XM? And he had his own channel. His own, he had the second channel he could have put me on. What's that? Wait a minute. Who's got a TV? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Who's got, that's maybe when we see more of the John, huh? yeah. Is that your TV set? Uh, like this yeah, let me hang on, turning it off. Oh, uh, please. Thank okay, you. sorry. You know what? You, you know what? what? I'm, I'm, I, I bought a new iPad, and I'm using the iPad, and I guess the iPad picks up the, uh, the TV more because I usually have the TV on on my other computer, and you can't hear it. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> now you know. But I can't hear you guys very well. I don't know what's going on. The the volume's really low. Turn up the volume. And I don't know how to know, do that. A, people they, know your real name now, John. Huh? <laughs> I, people I, know I, your real name. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what, did say, John, what did you say, John's iPad? Yeah. yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. They, they found you now. They're going to come and get you. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. But uh, it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, what, 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 brand new one? It makes yeah. you look skinnier. Does it? <laughs> Coming from somebody that I, I don't know how heavy you are. I'm really heavy. Yeah, I'm pretty heavy. Yeah. Anyway, so so anyway, Howard Stern said that about me, and uh, I'm oh. trying I'm trying to find it because I want to hear what he actually said. But he said, and then he said, uh, um, where was it? Uh, okay, let me go back here a second. And then he added my, my friend uh, that uh, uh, he said um, uh, he said like you. He, he was very sincere. It says here. I don't know what that was all about, you know. I guess he wanted to catch me before I dropped dead or something. I don't. There you go. Know. Yeah. Say something nice about me. Thank you so much, Howard. I appreciate it. I really, I do, I do, I do appreciate it. I just wish it had come a few years ago. It would <laughs> would have been a great help to me. Or if he had said something like, "And by the way, Alex has his show on GabNet," <laughs> you know. So that would have been nice. But I mean. Howard endorses me as a great host. So, what the hell? I guess I'm the only one left alive that he knows. So, you know, they're all going so fast. There went Larry King. Goodbye. You know. Um, he he lost his chops. There was no question about whether he lost his chops or not. He just wasn't doing those prostate cure commercials that well. You know. So, anyway. Maybe you're available. What? Maybe you're available. I'm a, I'm available. Yeah, to do those prostate ads. Prostate, hey, listen, so listen. I should be the prostate poster child. That's right. You know. So, you know, everything you want to know about the prostate, just ask me. You know, I'm the expert. <laughs> I, it, uh, and and uh, I'm, so anyway, where were we? Oh, so Howard. So thank you, Howard. I appreciate it. Uh, I I heard that. So um, did you? I, hear I, 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 yeah, I, I heard what, what he said. I was a caller that was they were dovetailing off of a Larry King thing and there was then there was somebody Neville or something like that. Is that somebody you John know? John Neville. No. Okay. No. Yeah, they mentioned that and then uh they went off on uh you and Bob Grant were Howard's two favorites. I think at WMCA that's what mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Then he said he was I was his fa a favorite of his and Bob Grant, right? Yeah, you yeah. and Bob Grant, and he knew all the DJs there. He he listened a lot. Yeah, well, he, he he also learned a lot too. And he <laughs> and he did too, absolutely. And I listen, I you know, I listen to you guys, and there's a lot of similarities. But I don't know if it's because maybe he took after you, or maybe you're both just a couple. Of or new maybe York he's my bastard stuff. child. I don't know. You <laughs> know, I mean, there's <laughs> always that possibility. Just, well, no, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, he's. Uh, his success is on a lot of people's shoulders, and you're one of them. Well, I mean, look, we're all a product of, uh, yeah. in, in show business, period. You're yeah. a product of all the people that influence you, whether you're a singer or a writer or a dancer mm. or uh, a guy who does a simple little thing like I do. Mm. I mean, I have my influences, mm. too. The only thing was yeah. that for years, Howard never admitted it. Right. And he used to say, I stole my act from him. And that was not easy to because he had the larger yeah. megaphone. Yeah. So you know, I would uh, uh, I would say something like, "Oh, you're Alex Manor. You're the guy that uh, stole everything from Howard Stern." You know, and I go, <laughs> "Begin if, with if, any, if it, anybody can claim that Howard stole their act, it's you." <laughs> yeah. Well, it, no, but you see, the thing was. It was. It's not chronically, yeah. chronologically possible that I stole right. from him. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. He was. List this is like when uh, you were. What years were you at WMCA? Uh, uh, this was uh, MCA was the 1980s, I guess maybe. 80s. It was 70s. 1970s. Okay. I went. In, I went. It went there in 69. That was it. Okay. I think because you know Howard Stern, he was a teenager, and I think and Howard's dad was a big radio guy, so they all knew you because yeah. That's well, I mean, no, was. he's look. He's admitted to people I know, like Walter Sabo, that I influenced him. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, but it, it, he it, it's just very weird. I mean, for all those years that he said I stole from him. You know, I mean, literally, they used to go in a rant on it uh, at least once a year. Okay, uh, and and 
it, it, it was it made my life a, a little more difficult. Okay, if he had acknowledged me, it probably could have helped me. You know, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, you know, at the time that I was fired from Sirius XM, we approached Howard's people about going on his second channel on 101. Yeah, yeah on 101, and uh, they said no. Okay. okay, now that's a place where Howard, if he really appreciated me, could have. Yeah, you know, could have come through, but he right. didn't. So you know, I mean. It's nice of him to say what he said the other day, yeah. but it didn't put money in my pocket. But right, you but, know. and also you know Howard's a freaking mental case, so <laughs> well, I don't know if he's a mental case. You know, he's, yeah, I mean it, that's what he puts forth. He's but, just my know. bastard child, and he has all my neuroses. Yes, uh, John. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? What? When did you start doing the um, the interviews with the comedians and having all the comedians on? Was that at the quake? Or no, was I, that I did the that. Quake? Um, I did that at uh, no before the quake actually. Uh, at, at, at started at WMCA. Then I went to the quake, and then I went to uh, KITS, which became Live One Hundred and Five. By so Camel. That, yeah. So. so 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 you were doing the comedy uh, interviews like in the early eighties. Right? Yeah. Nobody else was doing that kind of thing. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it all happened by accident on my show. But once it happened, uh, people, come, you know, morning shows all over the country then started saying, oh, let's go out and get comics to come on the show, <clears throat> you know. But, yeah, uh, but none, of, did... none of them knew how to handle them like I did. I mean, I really, right. I have to, I'll brag here for a second. I know how to handle comics because basically I'm not in the radio business. I'm in show business. And they're in show business. And so I, I have that same sensibility, you know, and I don't try to top them. I know how to be a straight man when necessary. Mm -hmm. I know how to be funny when they kind of aren't so funny that morning, you know. So um, I, ha I have that ability. And uh, uh, a lot of these guys who did morning shows, they would go, okay, Bobby, now we'll come back on and I'll say hello to you and then do some bit, you know, do a bit. <laughs> And I never said to a comedian, I never asked a comedian ever to do yeah. material on my show. Except yeah. when we were doing like the Breakfast with Bennett's or things like that. And we brought them on and they did a little bit of their act, a little piece of their act. But uh, outside of that, I never wanted them to, to do their act. I just wanted them to converse mm -hmm. with me because they were naturally funny to be, to ad lib it, you know. And, and a lot of times when I had comedians who were just setting things up so they could tell one of the jokes out of their act. They never came on again because I felt that that was a pain in the ass. You know, that didn't work. So anyway, but all I'm saying is that, you know, uh, uh, Howard, uh, Howard was influenced by me. And I know he was also Howard. Uh, he was also influenced by Bob Grant. Yeah. The two of us worked on the same station together, Bob mm -hmm. Grant and I. And in fact, I came on before he went on. And then we did a little overlap and he was very much right wing and I was a left wing hippie with the you know with the long hair and, yeah. the, and the beard, and uh, we would go at each other for like you know ten minutes as a crossover between the two shows. Yeah, and, he, they, and yeah, Howard, Howard yeah. mentioned that you'd like you know Alex is the hippie, and he kind of noted that dichotomy between you and Bob Grant. I yeah. guess Bob. Yeah, Grant, but Bob I, Grant, Bob, Bob yeah. Grant, and I really liked each other, mm -hmm. uh, and so all the sparring we did was in good fun. You know, yeah. and a few years ago, I went to do a, some pickup work, some part part time work at uh, at WOR here in New York, and and uh, uh, Bob Grant had wound up there and was there, and uh, the, the program director did a reunion between the two of us. Oh and, wow! Uh, you know, I mean, I I thought the world of Bob, and yeah. uh, I don't hmm? I don't know much about Bob Grant living in Ohio, but I've just heard that he's like the most beloved. DJ that's ever been no or something no like no that. he no. wasn't beloved he was okay. he was a right wing talk show host yeah who but, was no nonsense and so yeah. on I mean but it was a lot of it was an act uh but, but, but did a no nonsense act and I can see where Howard took some stuff from him because he was that nasty side that that Howard picked up you know yeah. <laughs> and uh he what he picked up from me was uh I don't know what he picked up from me all I know is one I, day somebody said, "You got to hear this guy Howard Stern. He's doing I, that." I think, and, what, and I, I listen, wait a minute, and I listen okay. to him. I listen to him, and I'm driving in the car, and I'm going, "Fuck, he he is doing me," 
you know, and uh, I had to turn it off. I couldn't keep it on. And from that time on, I never listened to Howard Stern. Mm. There, there are people out there that think Howard Stern's funny. I think Howard's very good. You know, yeah. Howard's he's, terrific. He's um, good, yeah. but I don't like his, he, he's not really a comedian. Well, he, I don't know that he's funny, but I think he, I think he does a good interview. And I think he's a, he, he's a compelling uh, host for sh morning show. Uh, yeah. I think and, probably in many ways. He's got all this crew around him that's entertaining, you know, mm -hmm. that he's built well, up. Well, I had a crew years. around me too. You yeah. Know. Bubbles was one of them, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Brown. I'd much rather listen to Larry King. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is that Howard is very good at what he does, and I will never mm -hmm. take that away from him, you know. Okay. Uh, well, maybe he learned it from you. Well, probably. I, oh, he, I think he learned a lot listening yeah. to me. But look, you know, I. I could tell you who I stole my act from. A guy in San Francisco named Don Sherwood was my biggest influence. Oh, wow. He was a KSFO, and he just oh. owned San Francisco in the mornings. And once I got a hold of him and I said, can I come watch your show being done? Because I want to go into radio. And he, he invited me down, and I watched him work one morning. And uh, this guy... Uh, had a big influence on who I am. I mean, there's several other people that played into it. I think Jack Parr was kind of an influence on me because of the way he interviewed and bore, bared his soul on the air, you know, and told uh, everything about him and about his psyche and some craziness that's going on in his head. And uh, um, I, I really was very much influenced by him. So all these things merge into one person and create one personality. And I, I, it just bothered me that I knew that Howard was telling people that I influenced him, but if he'd just said it on the air one time, it would have helped, you know? Yeah, I, I think Howard, you know, being at Sirius now, he, he's not uh, obsessed with that competition anymore. He can afford to be gracious. <laughs> well, he can afford to be gracious. He could have afforded, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, I know. I've tried to be gracious all my life. Uh, except for those people who were directly competitors of mine, and then I jokingly gave them a bad time, you know. Part of being Jewish. Well, I remember Howard's nuts, so. <laughs> no, he's not nuts. He's, you know. I think he kind hey, of listen, is listen, anybody who does what we do is nuts. Otherwise, sure. we'd be, if yeah. we were sane, we'd be, we'd be, we would have gone to law school, you know, or we'd be out selling used cars. But we're not. <laughs> we're crazy. So we take what we do, you know, anything, an artist, uh uh, anybody who's in the arts uh, takes their insanity and puts it on display. And that's Absolutely. what they do for a living. If you look at a person's paintings, it's their insanity, and they draw it and put it on display. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I could have been a contender, you know. Yeah. Um, he's making, uh, he, what did he just sign a contract for? Another $100 million a year for the next yeah. 10 years? Oh. And uh, Sirius XM gets to use all his shows until 2034. Yeah. Y you know, I'll be dead by then, and maybe Howard will have joined me. Yes, John. Maybe, maybe you should start doing podcasts because that guy, Joe Rogan, they just get somebody just gave him like a hundred million dollars. What do you think? What, for, what, what do you think this is? What do you think this is? <laughs> oh yeah, I guess. yeah. You forgot. <laughs> you, this podcast is so bad you forgot you were on a podcast <laughs> with famous people, not with us. Get rid of yeah. us. Upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> I thought podcasts got to have kind of like a story well, or something. I'll tell you something. I think, pod, pod, you want my opinion? Podcasting is the lowest form of show business. I used, I used to Thank think, you. I used to think mimes, uh, and uh, and and uh, were were the lowest form of show business. But I think podcasting is below mimes now. Uh, I don't and, know. And, I, I've I've listened to some pretty good ones. Well, I, like. I still think it's the lowest form of show business because what happens? Guys lose their jobs at radio stations. What's the next thing they do? <laughs> they start a podcast. Yeah. And I read today that, for instance, Megan and, and uh, what's his name? Her husband. Uh, uh, what, what's his, what, who's the, who's, who, who, what's it, what's the Megan? The rapper? Ma no, Megan's husband. Ooh. Megan, Megan, and and is it Henry? No, what, what what's his name? 
The red-headed... The the, no, the red-headed royal. Oh, oh. we thought Harry. it was about Megan McCain. Harry. Huh? Harry, Harry. Oh, Harry. Megan and Harry are starting a podcast. <laughs> oh. Uh, Megan and Harry are starting a podcast. So, you know, good, good luck on that one. <laughs> You know, everybody starts a podcast. Every I looked tonight. Mm-hmm. Tonight I was looking. I wanted to find out whatever happened to Conan O'Brien. And I went and I looked. He's and got a... He's got a podcast. Yeah. That's it. That's it. He's got a podcast. You know, it's it went from a big late night show on, on NBC to the Tonight Show at NBC <laughs> to a slightly lesser show on TNT then to like a half hour on TNT once a week, and now he's doing a podcast. So uh, where do all the failures go? Podcasting. <laughs> there are so many podcasts out there. It's it's a cheap uh, it's a cheap commodity. I don't right? know. They're paying Joe Rogan a lot of money well, for his. Well, fuck Joe team. Rogan. He isn't yeah, that. I know. I don't. You know, so, <laughs> there's always somebody. Listen, years ago, you, you know, of course, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 the guy on. Uh, the Shark Tank, uh, uh, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Yeah. Mark, you mm-hmm. know, Mark Cuban made his his billions. Computers, software. No, you're not. You're not exactly right. What he made is he. What he did is he started a thing called Broadcast.com, and he went out and he took radio stations and just rebroadcast them on the internet, hundreds mm-hmm. of them. And uh, he got a reputation that this was the place to go. This was the biggest thing in the computer world. This was at a time when, you know, the Internet was still uh, nascent and in its, uh, its, its uh, puberty. And along comes Yahoo and says, we're going to pay you and your partner each. Uh, we're going to pay your, you and your partner $2 billion to buy Broadcast.com. <laughs> Cuban goes, okay. hey, write the check. And he and his partner all both walked away with, I think I think it was like $3 billion. They both walked away with $1.5 billion. And that's how Cuban became a billionaire. Now, was it worth it to Yahoo? Within a year, they closed down Broadcast.com because they couldn't make money out of it. But they paid $3 billion for it. Well, you pay Joe Rogan, what, a million, hundred million dollars a year, whatever they gave him. Uh, Good for Joe Rogan, you know. He's probably laughing all the way to the bank, but they're never going to see that money back, and I doubt if he'll even finish his contract. I mean, uh, they're already, it sounds like they're unhappy with him, you know, because in that new environment, he's lost audience because the show isn't what it was. So... You know, just because Joe Rogan got all this money for doing a podcast, there are always morons out there willing, you know, they don't know the first thing about podcasts, and they go, Joe Rogan's got 100 million viewer listeners, let's buy him, you know? And they don't know what they're doing. They're just executives at some computer company who don't really understand the, what podcasts are or aren't. I'm telling you that, you know, uh, hey, if, if somebody wants to come along and buy GabNet, I'm good. I think uh, $30 maybe would be a good price. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be gone we'll in a you, minute, put man. Put you on Wall Street, then we'll buy up all the shares I, like uh, I'd be da- I'd be down the street yeah. buying myself some shrimp. You know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, but I mean. It's... Anybody get in on that GameStop or GameStop, whatever? Oh, GameStop. <clears throat> There's a good example. Man. Now, I don't understand exactly what happened with GameStop, but a whole bunch of people got together and said, Let's just game the system or whatever. Right. And yeah. let's get this stock inflated just to see if we can inflate it. And they did. I mean, GameStop yep. didn't do anything illegal. They just picked GameStop yeah. and said, let's let's do this. The company GameStop's got nothing to do with it. It's all just, you know, Wall Street gamblers bidding the price up. And uh, Yeah, and, but and, but and, some, uh, some people started that, okay? Right. Well, well, yeah, right because... Out. And so today, the hedge so, funds, yeah. the hedge funds were so short they had sold more stock than was even mm-hmm. available, in of of the the shares that were available. And then these guys, all these small investors, followed it on Wall Street right. bet. Yeah, and yeah. Said, Fuck, let's buy it. Let's buy well, it. Some, we'll some buy people, people don't know what they're buying. You know, they're not I mean, buying. I mean, nothing. they they they, th- oh, they think they're buying they're, something. 
they're just trying to show how they can fuck with the system and everybody's freaking out for some reason, even though, you know, head funds lose money day in and day out. Once these kids get involved, they're freaking out. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the, happen. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what podcasting is good for. Okay. And it's not good for being like Joe Rogan and suddenly getting some people who are willing to waste their money to spend a hundred million dollars on you for a couple of years or something, um, is that it, what it was good for. And I, I told a lot of different people this, if you're a comic, for instance, do a podcast mainly because if you do it and you get enough listeners, then you up your price at the clubs you play at. Okay. <clears throat> so like, uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried, I met him at a party a couple of years ago. We go to a Christmas party together every year. And I said, so you're doing the podcast, huh? He says, yeah. He said, uh, they tell me I got like millions of listeners or whatever. He says, I don't know. He said, but we answer me this question because you know this kind of stuff. And I said, what? He says, how do you make money out of this? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, if he isn't making money out of it, then nobody is. And I said, Gilbert, here's how you make money out of it. Double your price at the clubs you work at because you're worth it now, okay? I said, you're never going to see money off the podcast, okay? But you are going to reap the benefits of having a podcast. And so that's who it, who it works for. That's who it really helps, okay? It helps, you know, magnify your, your existence in this world, so. Well, there's also, you know, sponsorships. Uh, you ever thought about, like, the Dollar Shave Club or stuff like that, you know? <laughs> you know I, I'm I don't have about? enough listeners to make it worth it to anybody to buy time. Uh, there are ads. You know, there are ads before this show goes on when in, yeah, on in, when we're uh, – it's actually our, our rerun of the show, okay? Okay. Uh, yeah. And the rerun of the show. And um, uh, I uh, – you know, it's fine. It's okay. It's good. You know, uh, but and I, I get I think I've made uh, I made one hundred and ten dollars a while back and I'm on my way to my next one hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> you know, but I mean, if I had more people listening, OK, if I could up this to a million people listening to me, I'd make a fucking fortune. But, you know, yeah. with my kind of people, it's just, you know, one hundred and ten dollars every six months ain't, ain't bad, you know. Mm -hmm. Do we do we get a cut? You can, yeah, sure. Sure. We get, where do I we send get a where, do I, where do I where do I send the check? Cost is applied to be worth more. Yeah. Uh, everybody is listening. Uh, call five people you know and tell them to listen to us. Tomorrow yeah. night, they, for instance. Let's see if we can up the amount of people that are listening. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know five people now. <laughs> you know, I have a spot here that I play. I played, and, and they demonetized me on the night that it played because they said they had to the, the, they had to get part of the money for advertising or get take the advertising money. They demonetized the show because I played some music that was in copyright. But it was music I bought. I bought it from this company called Storyblocks, and I, it's where you hear all, the, all its music. So uh, I I complained and they went okay fine you know we'll you know we'll take it off or whatever you know and then I played it again the next night and of course they demonetized me again <laughs> so then I took it off again I just had them cut it out of the show and it was in the commercials in the beginning where nobody listens anyway and. Uh, 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 that was fine, but then I decided I don't want this problem. Every time I'm going to play that goddamn spot, it's going to trigger something at iTunes, at, at YouTube, and tell them that I'm using copyrighted music. So I went in and I stripped in. I got the track, Albert's track of his voice, and put in new music that I downloaded from again Storyblocks that I pay 150 bucks a year to to use all any of their music into perpetuity, and. Um, uh, I put on the new music track, and th they demonetize me again because I'm violating copyright. I'm going, what's going on here? Is it Albert that's getting me in trouble? Yeah, what? Maybe, Al maybe Albert's a big celebrity. Yeah, you don't yeah, even know about yeah, it. yeah. I, I listen. I listen to these big DJ, how like house DJs, some house music, and it's funny because they're doing their they're doing their countdown, the end year, year countdown, and it's his music that he produced. 
that he made and he's announcing it as, oh, this is my number five hit track, blah, blah, blah. And then Facebook just, they wiped the whole song out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's announcing it. This is his music, all his credits, and they still zapped him. Well, in all deference to YouTube, at least they let me know I violated a copyright and that the copyright owner is going to get the proceeds from the commercials running at the beginning of my show. Okay, at least they do that. And then the show goes on and they don't cut anything out or whatever unless I ask them to cut it out. Facebook, they cut it out while you're doing it. If I started playing, uh, I don't know, uh, some song, whatever song, Lady Gaga song, whatever, all of a sudden you would hear dead silence on the Facebook feed. Fortunately, I'm not doing a Facebook feed. That's why I'm not doing a Facebook feed. You know, I mean, uh, 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 YouTube lets me go ahead and do it, you know. But anyway, I just consider podcasting the lowest form of show business because anybody with a (laughs) microphone and a... A, fi- a file recorder on a yeah. computer can have a podcast. It, yep, it's I know simple. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, Dan Meyer had a podcast. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. How much? That's you- where he's been for three years. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, that's that's. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, whatever happened? Do you still have that uh, the creepy those creepy van things that uh, Rob made? I don't. I I have to go find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dan Those and his creepy hilarious. van. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> how you doing tonight, Kevin? Okay, how you doing, Alex? How's everything out there in infected California? Oh, uh, pretty infectious. Yeah. Getting wow. hit with a lot of rain. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm just getting to feel that this is like a bad sci-fi movie, and it's the beginning of a bad sci-fi movie. The world is now being inundated by a virus. Every time they come up with a way, a vaccine or whatever, it mutates. It gets still keeps yeah. getting worse, and it keeps getting worse. And then you, what's happened with all this, everybody's dying left and right. They, can't, they haven't got enough room for graves. It's all, it's all going into the toilet, which it is. It is, absolutely. And then all of a sudden, as a result, there are these roving bands of paramilitary groups uh, you know who 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 you can't even or, travel down the highway because they might uh, grab you and kill you because they're part of their military we're, we're, we're but, stuck in a roland emmerich movie exactly they're in the government now too what they're in the government now too they're in the mm. government oh yeah. my god yeah yeah i mean uh, nancy pelosi today said she's very mm. frightened because she feels the congress has several members who are capable trying of trying to kill her. Yeah. 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 Hold, hold it down a little bit, uh, Dan, so the other people can like join in. I know because you get amped up. Yeah. And okay. I appreciate that. But I okay. you know. Mr. I, Trump I, might have Mr. Trump might have left, but he ain't gone. Well, no, it isn't so much that. It's just that I see this really bad Roland Emmerich film. Which well, <laughs> what Roland Emmerich film wasn't bad, but you know, it's a real <laughs> It's a that's a incongruity in terms, uh, it, uh, it, but it it's like a bad sci-fi movie that's going on. It is, and I'm saying, how many people are going to be dead before this is over? Is this thing going to keep mutating, and they never can quite catch up with it? There'll be a new vaccine. There'll be a vaccine of the week, you know, in order to be able to take care of this. So, I mean, what what you know. Uh, where are we going? And then these militias and stuff, it's all all what we put in science fiction movies, <clears throat> in apocalyptic yeah. films. Yeah. So it's scary. Very Q-Anon. scary. And then there's Kevin. I did it. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be there at the very end when the last cockroach is walking on the face of the earth. It'll be, <laughs> Ke- it'll be Kevin and that cockroach, and he'll go, Okay. Yeah. All told right. you so. Yeah. Told you so. I'll I'll yeah. talk to my basketball and everything will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are they still doing Trump stuff down there, Kevin? Uh, I don't know. I I don't think so. Well, they're still around, but not as yeah. not well. As loud, I, I think there's some new tragedy in California now. Mudslides. Yeah. Mudslides. Yeah. Yeah. Big, King City has a slide. It, 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 yeah, it, I think there's still two more storms coming through. Yes. Yeah, so are, are any of you religious? Any of you <laughs> religious? Uh, you know. Well, if if you believed in God, wouldn't you kind of get the idea he was trying to get even with California? 
Yeah. Because it's like one no, thing no, 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 after no. Just, another. Just just go. Marjorie will tell you. Marjorie uh, Green will tell you that it was laser. You know, lasers from the saucers that started all the fires. And yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. Did she say that? She said that. Hmm. Marjorie Green. Did she say that? Really? She said that. Yes. In 2019. Can, can you answer me this well, question? Where she's from? Uh, she's from Kentucky, right? Georgia. 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 She's Georgia. a whack job. What, yeah, but she's for, where in the why would they elect this woman? I think she ran unopposed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're right. No, did you ever see that movie um, Deliverance? Mm -hmm. That's where she's from. I think yeah. she was hatched from one of them pigs down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's a fucking hillbilly. Hey. A, Marjorie, you got a hillbilly. pretty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I saw her on that. Uh, did you see that video where she was harassing David Hogue? Yeah, and, yeah. 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 Oh, like, yeah. Her, name, her name's Marjorie, but she sure sounds like a Karen to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think she's a Marjorie because I'm married to one, and I know yeah. Marjorie's. Right. Yeah. But yeah, she's a fucking horse face too. Is she a, a by the way, I, I feel sorry for any woman right now named Karen. By the way, can I bring that up? You know, and somehow yeah, the new. The, I don't know how it got started. How did it get hooked to the name Karen? I don't know. I, I, that I have no idea. Yeah, it was. Uh, wasn't it from that? What? Wasn't it from that uh, that lady that did all the bitching about that that uh, kid? Yes, that, yes. That lady in Oakland. No, in Oakland? I think it was a woman in Central Park. No, it was, it was taking before a video. that, I think. No, it was before that, yeah. I think it was before that. Oh, really? it, was the, it was a lady in Oakland that called in the, the oh, black man. lady that uh, was, what was it? It was, it was a barbecue. She called the cops on the kids that were selling Kool-Aid. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I think That's her name was. actually was Karen. Her name was actually Karen, I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I feel sorry for Karen's. Yeah, yeah. Did there I are nice people in Karen out there, and did I? Ever, they're actually that? starting to use uh, Kevin as the the male version. Guy. I'm trying to think. <laughs> went, oh shit! I'm trying to think. Did I ever? Did I ever fuck a Karen? No, no, I never got around to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I did have I did have sex with a Marjorie. So you know, I mean, it's uh... <laughs> you'd know it probably it would probably have burned when you did. It probably would. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, why the hell should we be putting fences up? I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, well, get, it's getting it absolutely like, ridiculous. They want to keep, they want to put a permanent fence around the Capitol. I, I'm so it's pissed stupid. at that. It's ridiculous. You know, it shouldn't be. I mean, that's uh, yeah. that's a place that any of us should be able to walk into and see and appreciate. You know, and mm -hmm. and, and and that's the way it was. You didn't have to have yeah. a. A, a, a pass to go in there or anything. You could go in there and look around. You could even sit up in the balcony and watch Congress work. You know. Um, well, and there's so many Republicans out there, and I, you know, I hate to put it on the Republicans, but there's so many of them out there that are just, you know, joining in with this group. Yeah. And and yeah. Kevin McCarthy went down there to talk to the the boss. Oh man. And I don't understand why. You know, why the hell is he even involved? He got fired. He's gone. Why is why are they even talking to this guy? They're afraid of him. I don't know why. Why? Why? He's they done. Have they, no they think he's, they think he's got some they think he's got some magic with a certain group in America that can put them over an election. But obviously they can't put you over in an election. If they could, yeah. they would have, and yeah. they didn't. Okay? So, so you're going to lose. You're going to lose some of the Trumpers, but you're not going to lose all of them because you simply abandon Trump and go on your merry way. Yes, John. You think he's going to go show up at the uh, trial? No. 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 Nah. No. Nah. He could. He can. He's got every right to. Oh yeah, he has every right to. Listen, I I don't know that that trial. Uh, oh, I there's no way they're going to convict him. It's a them, you know? right. It's a futile attempt. Uh, Jer but you know Charlie, what? Let, wait a minute. It's for the history books. Yeah, yeah. Char Charlie, and it's to get them on record. Yeah, Charlie, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Because I mean, the fact of the matter is that they're not going to get. Well, they're not going to. They're not going to convict him in the Senate. Well, the problem. And what's the, the problem advantage? is they may have enough evidence that the Republicans will have to convict him. I, right. They I, need to. They yeah. need to. I'm telling you, if they don't convict Trump. 
He's going to do it again. Hitler tried the same shit in 1924, yep. and they gave him a pat on the hand. And he came yep. back and took over the fucking country in 33. Well, they put yep. him in jail. That's where he wrote Mein Kampf. Yeah, yep. and so yep. that's exactly what Trump's going to do if they don't punish him. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> Trump can write. Yeah, well, <laughs> every time he's writing, he's either will. I, quite Hitler frankly, quite right frankly either. I don't think we either. have to do anything about him. I think he's in enough trouble right now. That's all. That, I, that, I saw a thing that uh, PBS ran about his finances and how they're sorely in trouble. You know, that's yeah. fine, but it has nothing to, get... to do with the government. It has nothing to do with I... the government. Somebody else can come back in and do that shit, and and it... he may not. Somebody the smart next person may not be as as stupid as Trump yeah. and might be as more, more strategic than Trump. Oh no. I listen, really foolish. Listen, I think there will be another Trump. I just right. I think it will be a guy, somebody who's smarter, sharper, right. more conniving. Right. And, right. and it'll be, be no, Norman Bates. Yeah, well, all the, all yeah. the more reason to make sure that this, this shit gets taken care of now. Yeah. Yeah. It's Cause then be it Norman gives, Bates in the Senate. It gives, gives anybody a, son, a free pass. It? Huh? Gives that anybody a free pass to do whatever they want if they lose, yeah. you know, until they get kicked out. Alan's been a little quiet tonight, Alan. Um, I, I, I'm just, uh, I've had a busy day and I'm enjoying the conversation. Yeah. And I, uh, I agree with some of the people here that I don't think that he will be convicted. And if he's not convicted or convicted, this gal that's running her mouth, she'll probably be running for president. She might yeah. even make it. You never know. You, you know, know, and that would be like Trump all over again in a female body. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, I which, don't, which one's this? I don't think Marjorie she's carrying Taylor. that. What, happen, what happens if yeah. Trump decides to run for Senate down in Alabama or or or, no. or somewhere down there where you think he could win pretty easily? What happens if he makes it into the Senate? I'm going to make a prediction. He could do that. I'm going to make a prediction. Yeah. 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 Five, okay. four I'm, years from now, Trump won't be alive. Be dead. Yeah. yeah, I think I, yeah. I I look at him. And I say that's a heart attack waiting to happen. You know. Yeah, yeah. we said Andy that Graham four years ago around. too. And he yeah, got but nothing COVID. nothing bothers him. He's gonna die of ugliness. What do you mean he's gonna die? But he's gonna be like a snake who had his head cut off, and he still thinks because the you lower half of his body is still working. People yeah. like that live forever, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, he lives a pretty unhealthy lifestyle. You know, and um, yeah, well, <laughs> I've seen a lot, a lot of other people of that are I mean, real healthy. It, the, the, the real healthy workout he gets is golf, but he cheats at it so he doesn't have to work too hard at it. Yeah, he look just at those drives people. around on the cart. Yeah. Look at those people that jog every day. Look at what we're doing. While they're look, jogging. We should be ashamed yeah. of ourselves. We're here talking about Trump. Why? Yeah. yeah, well, he's still a danger. He's still yeah. a danger to this yeah. country. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. He's still a danger, yeah. but he becomes less of a danger if we don't talk about him. You know, I mean, nope. it's keeping nope. him constantly nope. in people's minds. Not till he uh, gets convicted. Not how's that? Gets... How, how's that going to? How's that going to stop? That will only make him a martyr in the eyes of those idiots who follow him. Good. Well, They're well, idiots. He can't as run long as he can't do nothing about it. But if they convict him, then the the Republican Party will say. We're done with him, and you fucking Trump supporters, you're on your own. We're not well, gonna I don't know when the Republicans are going to say we're through with him. You know? If they convict him, which they I, can't I do don't anything think they with will, I guess does. there might be a slim chance because I think Schumer wants to have a big, long, drawn out trial. I think so. Money, money, they, money, money. They yeah. need an excuse to get rid of him. A lot of the, the, I think the excuse is happening right now. A lot of the big donors. To yeah, uh, yeah, the corporate money don't party. want to be involved with that guy, you know, being involved with the guy that tried to take over the. Uh, well, they don't want. Yeah, they don't want to be involved with anybody they perceive as part of that cabal either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. in spite of all his complaining and so on, I don't think Ted Cruz is having a very good time lately. I think nope. that I don't uh, think he's going to have an easy time raising money the next time he decides to run for office. Did you see what Ted Cruz did today? He tried to jump on that GameStop bandwagon with AOC, and then AOC just came back at him and said, "You fucking tried to murder me." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. What, what what kind of bandwagon were they trying to get on with GameStop? Like, the GameStop thing, AOC was like, you know, we got to investigate this because you know this uh, the establishment hedge funds. 
you know, um, one of the apps that shut the trading down or something, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And and Ted Cruz just yeah, said. I can't remember. It was so, I forget said, the company. I agree. Yeah. And then AOC. I love AOC. It's just like awesome. something like Pied Piper or what? What's the name of the thing? It was a it Robin was Hood. A, Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They stopped trading it because it was just they felt it. There was something wrong with what was happening with uh, really? with GameStop. No, yeah. they wouldn't let you buy the rich friends. There's no they reason. They wouldn't let you buy the stock, but they would let you sell it. And well, there was so. no reason why that stock did the jump that it did. There was nothing, yeah, did. you know. What they sold? Everybody... They sold a lot of video games while people were at yeah. home. No, no, no. The only closing. reason why the stock went up was because there was more buyers and sellers, and the only reason there was more buyers and sellers was because the all all the hedge funds had, were all short. They had already sold, so they had to start buying to cover their shorts, yeah. as well as the Wall Street did, bets guy for buying did too. Did I did I read Squeeze something? Them. Did I read something wrong that that stock jumped something like sixteen thousand times or something? Yeah, amazing. Like, from like seventeen bucks to. Three hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's like a Fortune yeah. five hundred in like a day or so, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. then today, today it fell all the way down to like one hundred and fifty, and then at the end of trading after hours, it's all the way back up to three hundred. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's no reason yeah. to buy GameStop. You know, no, the company's no, no, going. The company's going out of business. Well, the company, yeah, they, yes, they the company's our... had to close down a lot of their stores. Yep. Yeah, I think they're going out of business. I, well, I think they're, no, I think they're doing their sales online. You know. Yeah, but still, they're like Blockbuster. Their history. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, like they're right. at close at one ninety three, and they went back up to uh, three eleven after hours. Son of a wow. bitch! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> AMC is next, or the AMC was yeah. jumping up too. What AMC? The movie? Uh, yeah. Know. Yeah. What, yeah. Are you, what, what? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What? Are stocks going up for anything that's closed their doors? I they're mean, pretty, what? Yeah, what yeah, is this? No, I think they're, it's they're, just these Reddit kids. They uh, they're like, you know, hey. And they yeah, love their but in order fun. to play this funny little game, you got to buy the yeah. stock. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't just or the option, or you buy the they're, option. They're, for nah, like, you good. can buy the option for like thirty bucks. They're and crowdfunding. Like I heard this one mm. guy, he bought the options earlier this week for like thirty bucks, and and within like by the end of the week, they were one of those options was worth like three thousand dollars. So so then did he so, sell it? No, I don't know. Not yet. Well, but I mean, that's that, stupid not to sell it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of all of this, Jeff? It's beyond I you, think right? I this is the craziest yeah. stock change that I've ever heard of. It's absolutely crazy. Well, you know, um, again, I go back to our ex-president. Excuse me, I'm, I've been going I'm picking my teeth because uh, I, I ate some salami before I came on the air, and it's gotten stuck in my teeth. Anyway... Um, it's kosher salami. Yeah, at least you didn't say you had salami stuck in your throat. Yeah, well, anyway, so, uh, uh, but I mean, it, it, it's, uh, you know, stocks jumping like that. You know, the whole the whole thing was that Trump always made a big deal about, oh, the stock market's doing great. You know, who's the stock market benefit? Mm -hmm. People who invest in the stock market. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't right. mean that the average American is making more money or has more money in his pocket or that his life is no. better because... The, the Dow is up. I mean, the Dow is at an all-time high. And, I, hey, I'm making money out of that. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have some stocks. And but, but, but for the average person in America, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't hold mean water. shit. Yeah. Well, it's, it's even worse than that because how do companies get their stock prices up? By profits and things like that. How do they do that a lot of time? By Firing, laying off, laying off, laying, people. Laying off so, people. You know that's the reward yeah. for laying off a bunch of people. Is your yeah. stock How price do we price. raise our stock price? Yes, uh, uh, Alan. Okay, so I know a little bit about the stock market too. But I mean, you know, but not a lot. But um, today's price jump was not a bunch of people buying it. It was some like Fidelity or somebody like that buying buying it and seeing it. But it's ridiculous. You can probably go on their, the company uh, GameStop site and see who the institutional investors are. And they're the ones that drive the market up and down. Anyhow, 
not the individuals like you and me that buy a couple hundred shares or something. Wow. No, but, I mean, but... the, big, the big drop, the big drop that Kevin was talking about and the big gain in one day is just crazy to me. Yeah. 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 But great. the reason the price went up was because the big institutional investors had to cover their shorts because yeah. it was yeah, a squeeze. That's, that's yeah, that's squeeze, they, they were buying the stock because they had to get out. Otherwise, they were well, going to lose more. It, it's insane, so. and it's insane primarily because it's GameStop. Come on, yeah. you know. I mean, if yeah. this were GM, okay, I can understand, yeah. you know, or, or a Tesla or something like that. But I mean, yeah, GameStop is it, it, not a product. You know? <laughs> you know, so yeah, you, you couldn't do it with with GM. There's too many shares outstanding in GM. Yeah, but well, they do it with Tesla because Tesla doesn't have that many shares outstanding. But this was all this was all done by a bunch of people. This is all done by a bunch of people who wanted to see if they could do it. Right? I mean, that's yeah. how the whole thing yeah. happened. I mean, kids, look at their look at their fifty two week low was two dollars and fifty seven cents. <laughs> <laughs> Their 52 week high was $483. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Somebody's really fucking with it. it somebody yeah. is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's sort of scary, too. But why did they pick GameStop to do this with? I mean, they could have done it with any because number. Because it was so low. Yeah. Right? It was what, just there. Why Blockbuster there wasn't was, available there was anymore? A bunch of teenage punk kids that are going to yeah, fuck There was with a it. lot of short interest. Yeah. So, we, 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 Wall Street, it's a public record. Yeah. That, that shows how many shares are short. So when you see a company with a ton of shares short, that's a potential short squeeze. Why don't we? Yeah. Why don't we realize that the stock market is the world's biggest casino? Right, it, it is. is. Absolutely. You know that, that it all is. it is is gambling yeah. on that's a very institutional level. Kind of, that the point that kids are trying to make, I think, is mm -hmm. just ridiculous in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it's pretty. It's actually almost legal what they're doing well it's the reason why you yes. got yeah. somebody paying joe Very rogan a hundred million dollars a year or something or whatever they gave him yeah, it is it is legal there's nothing illegal mm. about. nothing yeah, illegal it about illegal. It. it's a lot but, like the dot-com era but there is a there yeah. is a uh, uh uh what's the word i'm looking for lemmings quality to all of this yeah. where you know yeah one person yeah. leads and everybody jumps off the cliff with them Yep. You know, and yep. and uh, it, it, it th this is what happened with, you know, Cuban selling broadcast dot com and Joe Rogan getting a million hundred million dollar contract and Stern getting a hundred million dollars a year for the next 10 years. I mean, it's in the absence of any well, real money. information, people will invest in this kind of stuff, you know. Yep. And uh, but, but GameStop, come on! I, 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 I that's a, that's one of the bit. I love to, uh, technology. I love playing games. But that's one of the businesses I used to walk by and just keep walking. You know. So see, I John, see, John, there was a story on the podcast today. See, the whole story went all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that worked In out, John. Circle. What do you mean? We're on a podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a podcast. Uh, uh, it's like Seinfeld, the show about nothing. Yeah, John. This is this is a podcast. You have been on a podcast. Okay. Uh, the, from the first, it was, this was the first, I was the first podcast ever. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it all yeah. started with me. So. Yep. Yep. Hey, listen, there's our theme. Alan, good seeing mm -hmm. you again tonight, as always, pal. Uh, you, Brian Neary, it wouldn't be a show without you. Uh, Charlie Wallace, and that wouldn't be a show without you. It wouldn't be a show without Jeffrey. You know, those are the people here every night, and Alan's joined that crowd. John calls us most of the time. Uh, Dan has decided to call us again, and uh, nice to have you here, Dan. And, of course, Kevin. What can I say? These are all the regulars for the most part, and I, I really I really thank you for being that way. Anyway, uh, that's it uh, for tonight, guys. Why doesn't everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? Mm -hmm. There they go, folks. Okay, goodbye. See you later. Okay, uh, listen, we got Jack Bishop. He's up next with the uh, intersection. Uh, he'll be using Skype, which you can call him using the... Um, call sign uh, Gabnet Live. In other words, when he says, uh, wh where do you want to call? You just go Gabnet Live and it will ring Gabnet Live and that's the Skype number. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be back again tomorrow night. Last show of the week. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, as I say, if you see her, 
Tell her I love her, okay? Have a nice night, everybody. Wear a mask and be safe out there. Gay schleffen. <laughs>